In Indiana, a prototype carbon scrubber is readied for its first real test by the Discovery Team's eco-designer, Jennifer Langwell. And in the Mediterranean, Basil Singer, the team's science advisor, has tested a torpedo that could safely store excess CO2 in the future. But the big question is, what's available now? Kevin O'Leary, the team's logistics expert, has hitched a ride with Professor Keith for a fact-finding mission into the North Sea. They're headed roughly 50 miles off the coast of Norway. This is the Sleipner Natural Gas Platform. It stands 650 feet above sea level and weighs in at 90,000 tons. Each year, it pumps up to 12 billion cubic feet of gas from below the ocean floor. This operation is one of the most prolific gas fields in the world. It's producing almost $20 million a day worth of natural gas. But it's what this rig pumps back below the ocean floor that's truly amazing. And it starts with this giant machine. This machine captures a million tons a year of CO2 from natural gas and puts it into a rock formation about a mile beneath our feet, disposing of CO2 that would otherwise be vented to the atmosphere. Sleipner produces $7.3 billion worth of gas a year. But before they can sell it, they have to remove the carbon dioxide that's mixed in, roughly 9% of the total volume. Most platform operators simply release excess CO2 into the air. But the Norwegians figured out a way to safely store the carbon dioxide they extract from natural gas. Sleipner gets its natural gas from reserves stored in porous rock 2,600 feet below the surface. But other sections of porous rock are empty and serve as storage tanks for all the CO2. A satellite rig houses a CO2 separator to remove the carbon dioxide from the natural gas. It's then pumped across to the main rig and down into the porous sandstone at the rate of 3,000 tons per day. Sleipner has stored millions of tons of CO2 in just the past 12 years. So Kevin and David are eager to find out more from the rig's engineer, Tor Torp. This facility is to separate CO2 from the natural gas. What's exciting is this proves you can put away significant industrial volumes of CO2 and dispose of it. Torp tells Kevin that by storing their excess carbon dioxide, the rig owners avoided a heavy government tax on CO2 released into the air. It's always about the money all of the time. That's, right. why, that's why this technology works, because it's cheaper to stick it in the ground than put it in the air because of the tax. So that's why if we want to see more of this, we need more economic incentive. More price on carbon going directly to the atmosphere will develop the technologies to solve this problem by finding ways to avoid putting it in the atmosphere, or take it out, and put it underground. According to Torp, if carbon dioxide scrubbed from the air could be stored by ocean facilities like his, Professor Keith could forget about carbon dioxide torpedoes. So how much in the long run could you put there? The, the, the pore volume is uh, equivalent to 600,000 million tons of CO2. That's a staggering 22 times humanity's total yearly emissions. If that much CO2 were taken out of the air tomorrow, it would reduce carbon dioxide to pre-industrial levels. Kevin's convinced the Norwegians have come up with the hottest prospect to cool the planet. They're separating so much carbon out of the natural gas here. Every day it's the equivalent of 300,000 cars. They capture the carbon, they put it away, it stays underground for the millennium. It's a fantastic process. This is how you solve the challenges of climate change. Geological storage layers like these are common to most gas and oil fields on land as well as the oceans. And that gives Professor Keith some real hope for the future. There's a natural fortuitous connection uh, between where we get gas and oil out and where we might like to put the CO2 in.
Keith's carbon scrubbing machines could be placed wherever the earth offers the best natural storage facilities, including sites like this one. The amount of CO2 in the atmosphere is evenly mixed. So that means wherever you build your air capture plant, you're basically scrubbing CO2 out of the air from everywhere. Excess CO2 from carbon scrubbers would never need to be transported, saving billions of dollars. Just pump it below ground, right at the site. The big question now is whether it's really possible to economically clean carbon dioxide from the air in the first place. The answer is now on the road as the team moves David Keith's dream to the Calgary, Canada test site for the ultimate reality check.